You know that nice feeling. No, though. I don't know, ma. Oh, sorry, yeah. No, you don't know. <laughs> Well, hello people of the internet, my name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. So as you can see from the title and the thumbnail oh, <laughs> and by who's beside me, I'm finally doing another reading vlog with my mother. We did this video back in 2019 and it's been a while since- is it? Yeah, 2019, oh God, October okay. 2019. <laughs> and you guys have been constantly saying that you wanted us to do another one, that you wanted mom in another video again. I have told her this. She's very aware that you guys want her in a video. And now we've eventually got her to do one again. Lockdown is good for something. It gets me into gear. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I got her to do it. Because I was like, we're in lockdown. You have no excuse why well, you can't read it right now. So here we go. We're doing number two. So if you haven't seen part one, I'll link it down below in the description and also up here so you can go check that one out first and see what we read in that one. But this time we're doing another swap where I give mom a book to read. She gives me a book to read and it's not going to be 24 hours like the last one was. Oh. We're just going to actually read the entire book and then once we're finished we'll come back and give our thoughts to each other. But before that, in the last video I obviously made my mom read a certain book. I won't say it just in case you want to go watch the other video and you don't want to get spoiled. So make sure you go do that now because we're going to talk about that book. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go watch part one first. But in that vlog, mom never finished the book and she never got to give her overall thoughts when she finished it. So I was like, I want to make sure that she obviously tells you guys because I know some of you really want to know what she thought of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Mother, yes, take it away. Well, it was totally not kind of what I'd normally read. And uh, Kevin has been doing that actually, getting me to read a little bit more than outside my comfort zone or what my norm is. And it was was excellent. And the twists and the turns in it and the tears at the end, it keeps you going the whole way through it and actually gets better as it goes through, you know, when it all starts coming together. Thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely worth a read. And her other one as well is very good too. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. I also met her read Daisy Jones and the Six after she finished that. <coughs> And what did you think of Daisy Jones and the Six? I prefer Daisy Jones. In fact, she finished Daisy Jones when she finished it. I was sitting on the couch. She throws Daisy Jones at me and she goes, that was better than Evelyn Hugo. And I was like, okay, the sass. <laughs> <laughs> I see where I get it from. So what would you rate this out? Five stars. I'm pretty sure you said five. Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah, somewhere around there, four, half, five. Like, it's a while now since I've read it. So, of course, it's a little bit gone. There's a lot <laughs> of after happening in that time. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Highly recommend. Okay, so now we're going to get on to the books that I have, not the books, book, we're not doing multiple. The book that I have picked from mom to read and then obviously mom has picked a book for me to read. I know a lot of you guys in the last video also said that you were surprised I didn't make mom read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda since that's my favorite book. I just think age group wise, I don't think it's a book mom would particularly enjoy. Plus she's also already seen the movie and I know there's definitely the differences between the books and the movie, but I just don't think you would enjoy it. I'm not as great much. at reading a book if I've seen the film exactly. because I know what's going to happen and that just doesn't grab me then. Exactly. And I tried to sit and what, read Love, Simon and I just can't because I've seen it already and I know what's coming and it's, there's just no, you know, mm -hmm. anticipation of what's going to happen. So, yeah. And no. I, I, I get it hard to read a full book in, in a little while, in a short space of time. So I need it to be gripping me like and wondering what's going to happen. But I basically chosen a book because when I read this particular book myself, I obviously really enjoyed it and stuff. But the, one of the things in here is that the character, main character has fibromyalgia. I won't say names or anything, but me and mom know someone in our personal lives that has fibromyalgia so I think that's something mom's gonna be able to relate to and I just also think the story is really cute and I like it. I'm a little bit hesitant because I'm not as confident that you're going to love this one as I am when I recommend other books to you. Yeah, yeah. But I still think <clears throat> hopefully <laughs> you will enjoy it. So the book I picked for mom to read is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Now basically what this book is about, it follows this main girl who's called Chloe Brown of course and she lives in London and she has a near death experience. And when that happens, she's kind of like, oh, I don't really have a life. And she's kind of like, because that happened, she's like, I need to get a life. So she makes up a list of things that she wants to do so that she has more of an exciting life. And then she obviously meets this guy who is the superintendent in her building and stuff goes from there. I'm not gonna say much more about it. A lot of people will probably be wondering why I'm recommending this to you because I've already said this to mom that I was giving her a book that has like, sex scenes in it and I was like I don't think that's gonna bother her too much because it's not like Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. We also were not like awkward no. about those kind of things so I'm not worried about that aspect. I just don't know. 
if she's gonna like them. I think she will, but I'm just oh, doubting okay. myself a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, that's the book I picked for Mam to And it's read. not looking too big. And it's thin, yeah, exactly. And it's a big print. Oh, God. <laughs> you forget when you get to a certain age that big print is so important. It makes it so much easier to um, read. My bad. Especially in these dark evenings when the light's not so great. Mm. Right, I had two books. This was the one I was going to pick for Kevin. Okay, what's it called? Because this is my typical Irish mammy holiday book that goes in the suitcase and off you go to your sunbed and all the rest. And it's uh, Orange Blossom Days by Patricia Scanlon, which is an Irish author and one of my favourite ones. And sure, it's always the one you're looking for on the shelf when you're getting ready for to go on your holidays. I read this in the first lockdown and... Um, um, it just meant it was like oh I want to go on holidays and it's about all that kind of thing it's really lovely it's really easy to read it's really light-hearted it takes you away from the doom and gloom that we're in at the minute and that's why I liked it during lockdown mm -hmm. it made me feel like I was in Spain on holidays and things you do and the woman in it is much my age and with children and all the different things that's going through her head and trying to please her family and please her husband and be everywhere for everybody and all the rest and forget about yourself kind of thing. I was picking this for Kevin but I've changed my mind <laughs> but I, it's very I highly recommend it so if anyone wants any Irish mammy out there wants a nice little book to read there to get her through the dark days of the rest of this lockdown and winter I recommend that one. But the one I want to do is, it's like a uh, role reversal. Kevin recommended it for me, so now I'm recommending it back to him because he hasn't actually read it. And it's for the crawdad things. It's really not what I would read. And it's, I'm not really one for back in the ancient days and all that kind of even films or movies or books or anything back in the old times, but which this is kind of set in. But once you stick with it for the first maybe 50 pages or 60 pages of it, you get into it and I tell you there's twists and turns in this very enjoyable so I said I wouldn't punish him with a mammy book <laughs> this time and give him this to read and he recommended it to me but hasn't read it so I'm giving it back to him now to read so I'm looking forward to reading it because I've obviously seen this everywhere this is like a bestseller and like was on New York Times and all that kind of stuff so I know there's a lot of hype and a lot of positive things I've seen about it but I actually don't know fully what the story is about I do know like mum said that it takes place like back in the 1969s, it's not even that yeah. ancient, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a year from nearly as ancient as me, like. <laughs> I thought it was set like the 1800s. Ah, uh, yeah, but I mean, 1963, like, it, it, but it's real old. In your mind, it's okay. real old settings. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, um, when you read it, you'll understand why I said what I said. Okay, I'm looking forward to reading this. I'm sure there's probably a lot of you guys have actually already have read this since this is a, such a popular book, so. I'm looking forward to reading this. Hopefully I'm going to love it. So we're just going to film our reactions while we read this. This is going to be spoiler free. We're not going to share any spoilers. So don't worry. You won't get spoiled. Oh, For either of the books. Please put them out. It'll be fine. Ma <laughs> if mom does spoil it, I'll just edit them out. So don't worry. You guys still won't be spoiled. We're basically going to read them. We won't tell each other how we're finding the book. And then once we've both finished it, we'll come back here. Sit down and give each other what we thought of the book. Our final ratings and all of that stuff. Bella is outside going toilet right now and I just can't out focus because she's right there. Gonna go read and hopefully I will like this. And I won't take me too long to read this. Okay guys, so I'm just about to start reading Where the Crawdad Sings and I'm looking forward to it because especially based on reading the synopsis, I read that after I filmed with Mam. And obviously from the vibe and everything, even what Mam said, it's like a murder mystery kind of thing. And when I have ever read these in the past, it's a genre I don't read a lot of. But when I have read them in the past, I read them really quickly because I just can't put it down and I need to know the information. So I'm really hoping that's the exact same vibe I get when I read this one. Also, I have gotten the audiobook for it too, just because I've been really wanting a new audiobook. So I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook as I read along with the the actual book itself and yeah obviously it's not going to include any spoilers but i shall share some of my reactions in case you have read the book you'll know what i'm talking about okay so the first page of this book i just started it and uh, the first page of the book uh chloe says that she hates tuesdays and i said oh my god it's the first person i've met that i haven't had to say i hate tuesdays she actually hates tuesdays just like me i do always say it more like it's not anybody's day it's not the beginning of the week it's not the end of the week it's not the middle of the week it's not the day before friday it's not saturday and sunday it's tuesday there's no nothing to it there's no reason for it so uh, i just found that very funny that the very first page of the book would 
bring, make such connection with the girl already. So we'll see how it gets on. Okay, guys. So I have been reading and I've gotten up to page 40 so far. And I kind of just want to talk about what the book is actually about. The best what I know so far is this book is alternating between two different timelines. So the first one is set in 1952 and it's following our main character named Kaya, who I believe is six or seven during the parts that I'm reading at right now. And it's basically just talking about her life and how she's kind of been abandoned by her parents and how she became such an independent child from such a young age. So there is definitely content warnings and trigger warnings for like child abandonment. Kaya is like living in the marsh or like the swampland in this town. And she has like a little hut or a little house that she lives in. But her mom and her dad just haven't come home and her siblings have also left too. So she's kind of been left by herself at such a young age. And then in the other timeline, which is set in 1969, we're finding out about this guy named Chase Andrews who has died. We don't know how he died, but they found his body in the marsh and he was dead and they don't understand how he died. They're suspecting that he was murdered or they don't know if there's any foul play there but they're investigating it trying to figure out what happened. So that's basically all I can say about what this book is actually about without giving away spoilers but I'm gonna go continue and read some more because I am really enjoying it so far even though I'm only 40 pages in not too much like nothing's really happening you're only getting to know the characters and starting to figure out about this murder that happened. Hi everybody back again just continuing reading and I'm at the stage where Red is bringing Chloe out for her boozy night out. She's very uncomfortable in it and then she turns to him and says, I don't like it here. I want to go to see some of your hobbies or what you like to do. And uh, he says, I'm sure you'd like my hobbies to be exciting, but I'm at, they're actually very boring. And she turns to him and says, I thought I was supposed to be the boring one. He kind of in his head is thinking, how is she boring? She's f the furthest from boring that you could get. And it just made me realise that... We all go around with these ideas in our head of, of what other people think we are. Drive ourselves to mend it, mulling over like what people are thinking about us and what think people think we are. And instead of just accepting that somebody is in your life and they enjoy being with you and like your company and instead of tormenting yourself. So, because no matter what we think, we'll never understand what other people think about us or what people see us as. So a couple of lines in the story and it's just kind of put so much thoughts running around in my head now and I'm trying to read the book but it just kind of stuck with me and I just thought I'd share that with you. Okay guys, so I have read a lot more of Where the Crawdad Sings and I'm actually way over halfway. Well, actually, maybe not way over. I'm up to page 206 so I'm definitely halfway through it and I'm up to part two because this book is also split into two parts. There's part one and part two and I would say that so far I am I'm enjoying this book. I'm not like obsessed with it. It's not anything that's like, oh my God, a new favorite book of mine or anything like that. Because you guys may know this with my reading just in general, I don't read a lot of books that are very heavily on the prose side of writing. Just because I can find that really hard to read and I just get very bored very easily. Or when there's like writing sometimes that's really metaphorical or just like so descriptive and stuff. Sometimes it just goes over my head and I just get bored. And that sadly is just something that happens. I can appreciate it for being beautiful writing. Don't get me wrong. Like I can definitely look at it and say that's beautiful writing. That's so well written. But it's something that in terms of entertainment factor, it can bore me. So that's kind of a little bit as to what has been happening because like I've already said how this book is in two different timelines where there's one is focusing on the murder and they're trying to figure out who killed this person. And then the other timeline in this book is about Kaya and her growing up and where she is now, she's like a 20 year old now and she's all grown up and stuff like that. And she's having like her first relationship. I think her character arc and her story is a very sad one, but also her development and seeing her grow and all of the challenges that she has gone through and all of the hardships she has gone through because she's been abandoned by her entire family and just everything she's gone through to get her to where she is, how she ended up like teaching herself everything that she needed to be taught because she didn't have a parent to show her all of these different things. And so I love her character arc and I love her story and I want her to be protected at all costs. Like you just kind of want to make sure nothing bad happens to her because you just grow to love her so much. But at the same time, it's kind of just like, okay, this is beautiful and I'm loving this character development with this character, but I just want something to happen. And that's just kind of how I've been feeling. So I think where I am right now is that it's a three out of five stars because there's nothing I hate about it, but I also am not like obsessed. This is a new favorite book, but it has potential to go maybe to a four star depending on the ending, but I can't see this being a five star book for me, but I am really enjoying it. I'm actually quite surprised that Mam liked this book so much because I just never pictured 
her to like this kind of writing style. So I'm actually really interested once I've finished reading this to see what it is that she loved so much about it. Also another thing, the romance that's happening in here, at first I was a bit skeptical about it and I wasn't really feeling the romance. I was like, I uh, don't know how if I like this or not, it's kind of weird. And then now I'm kind of like a bit more into it. I also think maybe because the characters are like older and stuff now and that's why I'm starting to like it. And then also another thing I wanted to say just before I go and read some more is that I feel like I'm gravitating towards the chapters set in the present time period in the book, which is obviously 1969. It's not like present day as in 2021. But I feel like I'm gravitating towards those chapters more than the earlier chapters because I just kind of want to know more about the murder mystery. That's where I'm kind of more invested in right now. And you don't get those chapters so often. It's maybe like every three or four chapters you get one and they're usually quite a short chapter. So I'm just kind of hoping I get a bit more of that now going forward and yeah. That's pretty much everything. Okay, so I'm not great at this remembering to vlog and Kevin is going to kill me if he hasn't got enough footage on my thoughts on this book. So I said I better uh, get one in now today fairly fast. Miserable day here in Ireland today, so it's a great day to sit in the armchair and read. About 100 and odd pages into the book. Uh, I am, it's, 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 it's a nice book, it's well written, it's interesting, but I think it's probably a bit young based. You know, it's more for a younger audience and uh, not as relatable to me, for me, as my normal mammy books, as Kevin calls them, because they're more people of my own age and sure, that's why books are interesting to people, is what they can relate to in that. But it's very well written. The piece on the girl that has the fibromyalgia and that seems to be very accurate as well, as, as you know, we know someone that does suffer from that condition and um, so we would have a fair idea of what they go through on a day-to-day basis and how the struggles of life and are for them. They're fairly accurate, their account of it as well, and um, came across one little clip already of uh, this bit of steamy stuff and I'm um, thinking my son knew this was in here and he still recommended this book for me but we're, we're quite open family but still it's a bit strange when you're reading it you're thinking Kevin already read this and um, but anyways probably not exactly what I'd read normally but um, still quite enjoyable and um, for a younger pe person it would probably be even more enjoyable because they could relate to it probably even better okay guys so another update I am now up to page 278 I do not have much left of the book but it has definitely Definitely picked up because now it's getting very much focused on the trial aspect and the murder like reveal and we're trying to build up to it. I have a couple of ideas who I think did it but we're gonna wait and see and if it ends up being predictable I really hope it isn't but I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more and I think it definitely is probably gonna be a four star book just depends on the reveal at the very end if it's going to be underwhelming for me. And it actually nearly made me cry at one point because there was two scenes that were really upsetting. One was just one where I was really angry at something that happened and I was sad for Kaya. And then another one was just something that was really happy and a beautiful moment and I was just really happy and I nearly cried. And if you've read the book you might know exactly what scenes I'm talking about. But yeah, I definitely felt some emotions. Like I felt myself tearing up a little bit. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely liking this book a lot more than I thought I did. So let's stop pretending that I don't, Kevin, because clearly you love Kaya, so <laughs> stop acting like you don't. And remember how I said like, oh, I don't know how Mam liked this book. I I see why mom liked this book now. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go finish it and I'll probably come to you next with my wrap up with mom when I finish the book. Okay, so um, Kevin is going to be really uh, happy with me when he gets up and discovers that I've actually finally read the book and that he can put this vlog together because I know people have been looking for it for a long time. For us to do another one and I'm just so slow at reading. I do enjoy reading but I always find that I'm in the back of my head and thinking there's so much to be done and so many things to do and I haven't got time to sit down and read and do love reading. I have to say I'm glad I um, stuck with this book and the fact that I was doing the video Video with Kevin and that I felt I had to stick with it because it probably would have been one of those books that I probably would have put down after maybe about 100 pages and left sitting there and wandered around and maybe come back to it or maybe never come back to it but I'm glad I did come back to it and I have to say the second half of it I have really enjoyed and I think why I enjoyed it so much is because it's kind of brought back the memories of when I was younger and when I met my husband and young and all the experiences and the happiness and the joy and of that new relationship and sometimes you kind of lose that when you're like 29 years married now in May and you kind of forget those blissfully 
early days and when everything is so new and exciting and everything and it kind of made me think oh yeah I remember that and it kind of made me feel how lucky I am like to have met someone so young and be with them for so long and have had so much time to be with somebody that you love so it really brought up those emotions and I enjoyed it because I could relate back to it to when I was younger so I have to say I'm glad I stuck with it in the beginning I would have gave maybe the book about 3 out of 5 and I finished it and really really enjoyed the second half but it's definitely about 4 out of 5 and uh, yeah another good good recommendation and I'm sure younger people would really relate to it and really enjoy it but maybe not so much maybe the reason I related to it so much is because I have been that young person I have had that lucky to have had that experience people that haven't been in a relationship mightn't actually even enjoy the book as much because they mightn't even understand or can relate to it so it's because I could relate to it and I kind of stirred up some of those old memories of being in the young relationship and everything and it was lovely actually to bring those back into your head because sometimes you just get sinking back with all the troubles and hassle that's going on in the world and you get dragged down and you forget how lucky you are and it kind of brought all that back up and it's brought a little bit of joy back into my life in this troubled times and I really enjoyed it so I hope you enjoyed the vlog I suppose you'll be looking for another one so I'll have to get myself ready and it's coming into summertime so I'm better reading when it's summertime sitting out in the garden and all that kind of thing okay guys so we have both finished reading the books thankfully we have both got it done mom finished hers weeks ago I only finished mine literally today as I'm filming this but I had other things that I was reading I was and going then... to say you've read like two great big books or three great big books in that time yeah <laughs> I've read nothing since I read that <laughs> I think it's time for our verdict so do you want to go first since since you finish your book first, you need to I'll me. go first, will I? Oh, okay. I'm so nervous. Right, well in the beginning, I, I wasn't reading this for a video and I had to complete it. I probably would have put it down and said, oh, I'm kind of struggling with it. Okay. I was struggling with it. I, I felt it just wasn't for my age group and I was struggling with it and I couldn't relate to it. And I think that's why I was struggling with it. But about halfway or maybe two thirds of the way in, it really started to grow on me and I really did enjoy the end of it. So it went from about a 3 out of 5 to a 4 out of 5. Okay. The reason I enjoyed the second half of it is because it kind of made me remember, kind of like, because it's a long time ago since I first started going out with my husband, that kind of feeling of young and the excitement of seeing someone and the fun that brings and how new and fresh you know that nice feeling no right? i don't know ma oh sorry yeah no you don't know <laughs> sorry roll your face and sorry love him anyway but uh, no it just kind of brought that kind of reminded me of that kind of Okay. Because you kind of forget, like we're a long time together, so like you you forget about the beginning part of mm -hmm. of it because we've gone through so much in life, and it, that kind of it just reminded me. It made me think, oh yeah, I remember like that, and that's why I really oh. got into it and really enjoyed the end because okay. it was very lovely and sweet. So your depth, your rating would be, would you say three point five then? Overall, I suppose, yeah, because okay. yeah, and it just made me realise that sometimes it's worth persisting with a book because it actually might you know be worth hanging in mm -hmm. or just and if you start and finish it because i've left a lot of books in my time that's actually quite interesting <laughs> because going into where the crawdad sings i felt the exact same where at the start of it i was kind of like oh god okay if i wasn't reading this for a video i would have just put it down because i'm kind of bored right now that's literally what you just said the same thing you said you put it down too so i feel like that's funny that we both had the same kind of experience, experience yeah. but by the end of it, I really ended up enjoying this and I ended up giving it four out of five stars yeah. is what I would rate it. Just because the first part of it, as I said, like a bit being a little bit boring, boring and slow, yeah. I have to take a bit away for that reason because it did affect me to a point where I was like, eh. so I yeah. can't be like, oh, it's five and just Yeah, there was that. a risk of not reading, exactly. reading it. Yeah. Whereas other books I have read before where they start slow, but I'm still so invested anyways that because I love the characters and I just want to know everything. What happens, but I was yeah. getting like a bit bored. Just because I think the prose in this book are so descriptive and it's a very nature book as well yeah and at times i was just like okay i really don't care about this bird or these yeah. feathers that it's kind like of how we feel at the minute like i'm done with nature i want to do something different like go to the cinema or that kind of thing yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> but by the end of it really liked it the murder reveal part i was not expecting i said in the vlog and i already said in my previous clip i thought i knew where this was going to go and i thought i knew who it was going to be and I was like, oh, if it ends up being that, I'm going to be really disappointed because it's so predictable. I was wrong because it did not go the way I thought it did. And for that reason in particular, it really boosted up my rating because the whole ending of this and the whole trial part at the end, I loved it so much. And I just really love the main character as well, Kaya. Like, you grow to love her so much. And then by the end of it, it's really sad. And like we said at the start of this vlog, how when Mam read this, it was more out of her comfort zone. 
and then when she made me read it, this is also a book outside of my comfort zone and I really liked it. So, I'm very glad that I read it. Mm. 4 out of 5 stars. You're giving 3.5 out of 5 mm. stars. I'm very happy that with that rating for you. because Yes, I, because it's not really my age. Yeah, I was just like, hmm, I don't really know what books to pick for mum. <laughs> I know books coming out soon that I want her to read, but they're not out yet. She just said, don't keep asking for a part three because she needs time. <laughs> I need the sun to be shining and be able to sit on the patio and relax and read. When I'm not in the house, I'm not a great person reading inside. Yeah, you are more like a by the pool, by the a beach. A summer person yeah. reader, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Me and Mam Bo had successful reads. Yeah. I feel like it was very successful, especially for me, because this is something really outside of my comfort zone and I really ended up enjoying it so I'm really happy and it has made me want to read another book now shortly like because I does? haven't this reading oh. book like has made me want to read another book now. I have one for you that's coming out in May that I want you to read because oh. you know the woman who wrote uh, oh Evelyn Hugo Evelyn Hugo she has a new one coming out yes so we have to read that one too anyways that's going to be it for this video guys I really hope that you guys enjoyed it I really hope you enjoyed my mother being on the channel again <laughs> and other than that I shall see you all next time in my next video so goodbye guys bye